Hi everyone, welcome to my channel and I am Subhash Chandran. In this video, let's discuss about how to check your piping design drawings and piping design deliverables because we are committed to deliver something to client. So before delivering, we have to ensure the, whether certain things have been followed, certain things are really ensured, certain things are assessed or not actually. So in this video, let's try to concentrate on the primary things that we have to do so that we will get an idea about how the entire design checking process works basically. So let me start actually. See what is the input for the piping design. So the primary input for piping design is a PNID, right? So what do you get from PNID? From PNID, you will be getting the line size, insulations and materials and uh, you will come to know whether the type of insulation is hot insulations or electrical tracing is available. So you will uh, be able to see whether the valves are available and those things, right? So basically what you have to do is that you have to ensure whether the, your line has been um, arranged in such a manner which is similar to the appearance that is shown in the PNID or not. So, PNID comparing with the PNID is the first initial checking that we have to do actually. So uh, once after completing the PNID checking actually, the second important thing is that material. Because uh, even if you check the PNID, you can see there are uh, lines uh, which will have a transition from carbon steel to stainless steel, stainless steel to alloy steel. There will be interconnections of different materials. So you really have to be careful on that part. What kind of PMS has been used? What kind of piping class has been used actually? Whether your isometric shows different materials or not. Whether you have generated the different line numbers or not actually. So all these requirements needs to be uh, addressed actually. Only then you can ensure whether the line is designed properly or not actually. It's not just because of the arrangement that is shown in the PNID. It's also because of the material actually. Because material is the one that you are going to order. If you order the wrong material, what will happen? You may not be able to install actually. So even if you install, when the client goes through your design drawings and they will reject because you have ordered the wrong material but the PNID shows a different one, your piping design shows a different one. I mean, so you have to correlate with this materials and as well as the PNID. So this must be your second step. The third step is going to be economic routing. See, when I say economic routing, almost all the parameters comes under this economical routing. You have to see the cost. You have to minimize the uh, number of fittings. You have to ensure whether your line is routed only minimum to support the process. You simply cannot rise the lines to 100 meter at top and 100 meter uh, to the underground. So uh, that will give enormous amount of a space and also it will leads for the uh, what do you call um, unethical expenses basically. So you have to ensure your economical routings has been followed. Uh, put minimum number of uh, fittings and make sure that the uh, uh, enough amount of elbows are used, unnecessary elbows are avoided, avoid unnecessary loops actually. So all these things you have to study actually. So because these are part of the design, you have to do it actually. So otherwise you will be questioned uh, in front of a client and uh, it, it will not give you some sort of a good image. So your reputation is going to be disturbed, right? So you have to ensure all these things. Now let's go to the fourth one. The fourth one is that See, economical routing we have seen, it's about the number, reducing number of fittings and ensuring the entire materials are less or not. But the very important thing is the fourth point. See, when you uh, complete the routing, you have to assess your routing. How to assess? You have to assess the routing whether you have an accessibility or not, whether it has an operability or not, whether it has a maintenance space or not, whether you have designed for maintenance accessibility or not. General accessibility and maintenance accessibilities are completely different. Maintenance access needs an equipment entry like a crane, whether you have given a space for removing an equipment or not, whether you have given a space for entering the crane or not. So these are the factors that you have to uh, assess while confirming your routing actually. Just by uh, making some routing without making any assessment, it's not going to work. You have to assess whether you have a platform or not, whether you have the platform has access. The, does the platform needs uh, two access from both direction or does it needs only one access, whether safety issues are there or not. So all these factors that you have to analyze. So analyzing is one of the, uh, what you call, kind of an uh, uh, inherent feature that we have to have in piping design. Only by analyzing, you will find whether your design has a fault or not actually. So with this, let me just go to the next point. Next point is a safety. So what is safety actually? Let's say that you have um, made completed your routing actually and finally end up um, knowing that your routing is 
not above the headroom clearing so what will happen the person who is walking on the floor may hit his head over your line so you have to ensure those safety requirements are uh, properly um, what do you call complied in your design or not because every client has a some specifications safety specifications so you have to ensure see whether an operator while accessing the well is he have to jump or is he have to uh, lean in, uh, forward to access or is he simply have to rise, stand in front of the valve for accessing what is better actually so you have to know what is more safer for an operator what is more safer for the working personnel for uh, who those who are working in the plant so likewise you have to ensure the safety for example if anything any accessibility which is more than 1.2 meter you have to provide a platform actually so if you don't provide a platform where you can uh, uh, you force people to jump over the uh, some sort of an element which is no access then that will fall under some sort of an accidents right so you have to control all these things for that you have to analyze you have to check whether your design has uh, enough safety or not actually so with this let me go to the next point the next point is that support actually so piping design is not only about uh, routing so the as i said uh, routing is only one part in the piping uh, routing if you really interested to learn piping routing uh, you can refer my course which is one of the best course uh, i don't think there is any other course available for pipe routing in this course i have covered all the topics of the pipe routing for all critical equipments in the process plan so i could say once you complete this uh, course you will be able to do the routing uh, individually without your seniors help actually because in this course uh, i have highlighted the practical uh, examples and scenarios and engineering requirements to be used for finalizing the decision because the decision making is one of the very important thing if you are in uh, being a design engineer so if you are not in a position to make your decisions then all of your decision needs to be awaited for somebody else decision right so in this course i have uh, shown the practical parameters and uh, the real time uh, scenarios where you can make decision with respect to this given uh, knowledge in the course so this course would really help you to improve your pipe routing skill for entire process plan if you want to have any uh, clarification about this course you can always uh, uh, message me in my whatsapp number which is available in the details of the course actually so i'll be able to support you for for the clarification with this let me just continue the another point the supports so pipe routing is not only about um, uh, just completing the routing it's also about where to put the support how to put the support what type of support based on what services and what requirements <clears throat> all these things you have to see because if you don't choose the right supports your integrity of the piping will be collapsed actually the entire piping systems are uh, stood or are uh, what do you call uh, constructed in such a way uh, it can last for another uh, 25 to 30 years only because of supports so if you don't provide the supports properly you can um, definitely say that your piping system is going to collapse in a uh, few years because once it loses its material integrity definitely you will face that problem actually see if you see the systems which are experiencing more problems are the systems where the supports are not properly designed so supports are predominantly important in piping uh, thing so you should know where to put supports uh, how uh, supports are uh, designed actually based on what what type of supports whether you have considered enough number of supports or not so all these requirements are uh, important and even for a uh, supports i am have made a course you can check in my website pemidaka.com and go to course actually and if you want more details you can find the course details i mean the uh, whatsapp number in my course details you can message me and we can discuss actually and this course covers the um, uh, topics and subjects which are other than stress analysis because stress analysis is completely a different topic <clears throat> that i did not included because it uh, needs an uh, theoretical understanding of stress analysis but there are parts there are 80 to 70 percentage of supports are non critical supports which also needs an engineering evaluation those are covered in the supports actually so as a piping design engineer you should know because if you can uh, for if you have experience in piping design you will uh, have this understanding a piping design engineers doesn't uh, required to know the uh, analysis in 100 percent but they should know how supports are provided how analysis works these are uh, topics that are really important for a piping design engineer so in this course i have covered the piping support part which is other than non critical supports which are from stress analysis so ping me for any details i can explain you about the course details and the uh, the content and the intent of the course also now let's move to the next point support optimization see 
providing support is one thing and support optimization is completely different say for an example you have two different lines let's say you have considered individual supports for one line and considered individual support for other line support op optimization is nothing bad putting one support and placing two lines over one single support so this is called a support optimization so number of foundations have gone less actually so the number of supports also you can uh, reduce actually so these are known as support optimization so how to do the support optim optimization this is another level of check you have to do these things you can do only when you complete the routing and you uh, ensure your overall layout is fine actually then you will be able to ensure that these supports can be optimized or not actually so these are a part of design so it doesn't mean that you have to do everything from the beginning actually piping design is a progressive design actually the day one you will it will look like a conceptual day two it will look like more detailed and day three it will look like a final design so that's how it's a progressive design basically so every day you have to sit and evaluate and um, uh, minimize the errors in the design so that's how it progresses basically with this let me go to the next one actually stress analysis part so uh, as a piping design engineer you have to ensure that the support inputs are gone for a piping stress analysis or not whether the analysis has been carried or not whether the input from the analysis has once again incorporated in your design or not so this flow of input from here to analysis and then back from analysis is very important <clears throat> you have to ensure that all these inputs are completely transferred properly and received properly and incorporated in your design because tomorrow the client will ask you whether have you considered any critical um, uh, line list or have you considered any uh, uh, stress analysis uh, can you show me the analysis report have you uh, just show uh, can you show me how your supports are incorporated uh, for, with the recommendation of the stress analysis so all these questions you have to answer for that you have to support for stress analysis it doesn't require that you should know the stress analysis but you have to support this process actually stress stream will be a different team and they'll be working with the softwares and they will do all this analysis but you have to give an input right so only if you give an input and share this information they'll come to know if you don't give an input they will not come to know actually so you should uh, coordinate and get the input and ensure that your design is updated based on analysis so this is an another important thing the next important thing is that you have to highlight about insulation, painting and testing. See, uh, these are the check-ins that you have to do. Every line has, whether it is um, uh, the insulation thickness is proper, type of insulation, cold insulation, hot insulation, what type of painting is selected based on temperature and what type of testing is required actually. All these things are required in piping design actually. So, uh, you <laughs> don't get shocked because these are the general practice in piping design. That's how I used to tell you that. Piping design is one of the mainstream mechanical engineering job and you will never get bored in piping design. It's one of the fantastic engineering experience that you can learn actually. So uh, those who have worked in piping design can tell that it's sort of a completely mechanical engineering exposure that to core engineering work. So once you get uh, the uh, what you call that beauty of engineering uh, the experience from piping actually you will never ever experience any other engineering so that is what the integration of the design and application of the design and application of requirements of different inputs these are magical let me tell you so with this let me just uh, continue uh, to my this video the next point uh, you have to focus is that fabrication and constructional feasibility so these are the uh, last checking that you have to do so these fabrication and construction feasibility you have to do while preparing the routing itself so you have to have this concept actually so while completing the in your, um, uh, your routing and providing all supports and completing throughout uh, if you uh, completed your design sequence actually you still have to check whether it is supporting the fabrication or construction because construction feasibility fabrication feasibility is vital let's say that you have delivered an isometric and which is not feasible for fabrication and uh, you have delivered an isometric which is not feasible for construction again so what is the use you have to ensure whether you have reviewed the line uh, for the considering the feasibility of the fabrication and also the feasibility of construction let me tell you just one uh, example for this field weight say for an example if you have 50 meter of a piping all this 50 meter of piping cannot be um, uh, fabricated in shops right you have to fabricate few joints at the uh, site actually for that what you have to do you have to provide a field joint in your isometric 
if you don't provide a field join at the appropriate locations during fabrication they will suffer actually let's say that you have provided a field join for every 24 meter how to transport this 24 meter into a truck so you have to ensure whether your field joints are properly provided or not as per your requirements generally field joints are provided not more than 12 meters because the truck length is not 12 meters more than that actually so if you have any other truck which can transport more than 12 meters definitely it's acceptable but commercially there is no uh, truck which will be able to transfer i mean able to uh, transport the 12 meter pipe actually so this is the fundamentals of it actually so based on the commercial factors and the availability of the truck and avail requirement based on construction you can change your design that is definitely acceptable actually whether to go with the 12 meter or 24 meter but eventually you have to check whether the feasibility of fabrication and construction was considered or not so these many requirements you have to go through so uh, this is not a tired some uh, job when you uh, start working in piping design uh, you will be able to do most of these requirements while performing your activities itself actually that's the beauty of piping design so with this let me end this topic so so with this let me end this topic i will come back to you with another fantastic topic until then bye from subhash chandra